Hi everyone, in this video we will be exploring the rebuilding and auditing uh, feature for pawn cabinets using the VXFX120. So the pawn cabinets might have um, a chaos of fiber patching around and the purpose is to audit this uh, fiber mismatch and make sure we got the right connections going at the right ports in the minimum amount of time and to find out if there's a many if there's any mispatch on the panel so it can be corrected uh, in a very short time so normally we got two uh two parts in the cabinet the splitter part and the optical distribution frame part so uh there's there are two applications on the fx120 one to audit the splitter side and the other one is to audit the distribution side on the FX120, there are two ports, um, one on the left-hand side uh, highlighted, it's called 2 ONT. that's the one that gets connected to the ONT side, the customer side, and the one which gets connected to the OLT side. So it, depending on what kind of analysis or auditing we will be doing, uh, we will choose which of these ports uh, to use during the scanning process. So in summary, before we get to the details, if we are doing splitter frame auditing, we need only to connect the old T port on the FX120 with a patch code to, and we need to connect it to any free port on the, uh, on the splitter panel. So any free port can be used for that. But once we connect that patch code to the free port, we need to keep this connection untouched. So during the whole process, we will keep that patch code connected to that free port. Um, now, the other type of auditing, which is the distribution frame auditing, and for that setup, we will be using both ports, not only the OLT port on the FX120, but both the ONT and the OLT ports. And we will see uh, how to connect each of these during the scanning process for the distribution. Now, let's get into more details in the next slides. So for the splitter analysis, uh, we will be using only one port on the FX120, which is the OLT port. And we will just use a patch cord coming out from the OLT port on FX120 and connect it to any free available port on the splitter side. And the reason we, we say any free port, simply because the splitter, the outputs from the splitter are all identical. It's just a matter of splitting the signal they are all copies from each other. So it doesn't really matter where you connect to, you just need to get a sample or a copy out of uh, these signals. So uh, find out if there is any free port, connect to it, leave it, uh, leave it, it will not be touched during the next steps. Now go to your FX120 and you should get two applications. One is called splitter analysis, one is distribution analysis. Since we're doing the splitter analysis, we will uh, select the splitter one application and then it will ask what type of panel we will be testing. So it gets to understand the construction of that panel, uh, how many ports, um, rows and columns and cassettes and numbering and uh, uh alphabets so it depends really from one panel to the other so you'll find some um profiles there to select from if you're if you do, can't find the profile of your panel it's easy to implement and import the panel type and the structure of the cassettes into the fx 120. so we click you start um by clicking the start button on the fx 120 and the first thing you do is that you um, disconnect and reconnect sequentially port number A1 on the uh, on the on the panel itself. So let's say you got A1 connected on the splitter. Go ahead and disconnect that A1, and then reconnect it again within like two seconds should be enough. So you unconnect A1 and then connect it again uh all the time as we mentioned leave everything on the fx 120 connected as it is we're not going to be changing any connectivity on the fx 120 patch cord 
So what happens exactly when you unconnect, uh, when you disconnect the A1 port is you are trying to disrupt the connection between the ONT and all the happening on that port. And when you reconnect, the um, the two ONT and OLT are trying to reestablish that connection while the FX120 is listening to that reestablishment. So it can find out what kind of connection is happening on the A1 port. So uh, the reinitiation of the signaling between ONT and OLT will make the FX120 able to capture the SSN serial number and the PON ID between the ONT and OLT while they are um, negotiating the signaling between them. Remember, FX120 is connected to a free port listening to what's happening um, out of the splitter, which is a carbon copy from all happen uh, from all the signals happening on all ports. So, um, just to um, uh, simplify these symbols for you, we got O N L three dots. So the three dots means that's the port the FX one twenty is listening to now. So, assuming you progressed up to uh, port A five on the splitter panel, now the FX120 will display three dots on A5. That means FX120 is listening and waiting for something to come up in the signaling uh, between between the ONT and OLT. If the serial number has been detected, it will be captured by FX120, and automatically the unit on the software the FX120 will progress forward automatically to the next position, which is A6, for example. And it will wait there and listen again until you restart the uh, restart the connection on the next port, which is A6. So the three dots will continue to be there until something is being captured. If there are no connection happening on that port, you can simply choose uh to make an n which is a user intervention here saying no serial number so you intentionally make that no serial number push button so you can highlight or tick that port to be a no serial number identified because the unit has been waiting and nothing came up l means it's an empty port so by default the unit will assume there are no ports because we are doing an auditing and a scanning from scratch, from A1 down to the end of the panel. So everything will be by default L, and as we progress during the scan, we will be able to identify what's actually on that port. Is there a signal? Do we have a serial number? Or is it an empty port? So the unit is listening and waiting on the three dots. L is an empty port. Now, if you know beforehand, this is already an empty port, it, it doesn't make sense that you will be connecting or disconnecting anything on that port. It's already empty. So you just uh, take the empty, you just click the empty button and the unit will uh, flag that port as an L and move automatically to the next one. Now, let's assume during the scanning, you want to skip some ports because you know these are all empty. So, for example, you want to move from you want to skip the B6 down to D8. All these ports you want to skip. Uh, so you can simply click on next split. Next split. That means you are skipping the whole cassette because you will be starting from the E1. Remember, we said it ends. We are skipping from B6 down to the D8. That's the end of the first cassette. So when you click Next Split, that means you are skipping the whole cassette and starting the new cassette from the E1. It depends on the structure, of course, of your panel and your frame and your rack. So the unit will simply flag all these ports that you skipped as being empty. and the unit will progress to the first port on the next cassette, which is the E1 in our case here. And it will wait there, listening, 
and waiting for the user or a connection to happen. So you start repeating this process until you finish the whole set, uh, the whole set of ports on your panel. And then you get a complete list of what was connected and at which places. Let's assume the user would like to step back uh, in case he suspect you're suspecting that um, you did something wrong or you're not sure about what happened on an earlier port. So you can step back one port at a time to redo the check for that port by clicking the previous button. So the unit will step back one port, wait and listen until you uh, re disconnect and reconnect that port physically on the panel. But once you want to resume back, you can't really resume back and skip like three or four ports forward. You will simply resume to the next port again. So when you say when we when you click previous, you are stepping back one port at a time. You click previous again, that's two ports. Three previous, that's three ports. So in that example, we are the unit is listening at A5. And you want to jump back to double check on A2. So you simply click on A2, the unit will wait and listen until you uh, disconnect and reconnect the A2 port on the panel. Once it's finished, the unit will redo A3 onwards because there are chances that you also you might also did a mistake or there has been a confusion on all ports backward from where you stopped at A5. So A2 to A5 needs to be redone. That's highly recommended. Once you complete the job, the unit will export a CSV file containing all the information captured during the scanning process. So it will show you the rack number, the position uh, in that rack, what has been captured, if any, the serial number and the pawn ID. So a perfect situation is that you got the right serial, you got serial number, you got a pawn ID at the right position. Uh, an incorrect situation, you got a serial number, a pawn ID, but at the wrong position. Uh, another information, you can get a pawn ID, but no serial number. Another scenario could be an empty port. So you got the different scenarios listed in that file, which you can compare to the database uh, of the uh, as-built uh, uh, coming from the commissioning of the network. That was for the splitter analysis. So moving forward to the distribution analysis, it's pretty much the same. However, we are using now two ports on the FX120, not just one. So click on the distribution analysis app on the FX120, and you will load uh, the panel type, and we start using the FX120. And for that, we need two patch cords. One is going to be fixed, connected permanently to the FX120, and that's the one going to the old T port side and the splitter side. So that's the one in red here. It's fixed. You don't touch it across the whole process. The second patch cord will be connected to the own T side on FX120, while the other side of that patch cord, the one in, in yellow color here, is being swapped and uh, scanned across the different ports on the ODF side, the distribution panel side. So yeah, just pay attention to the colors here. Red is the fixed patch cord. You don't change it because the unit will be listening on that port. And the orange part, that's the one being swapped across the distribution and briefly disrupting the customer connection and the unit will be in line listening for the re-establishment of the connection. So to start with, if you need to know what's on A1, disconnect the customer from A1, the, con the customer 
patch cord. Connect your FX120 on the patch cord to that to, to, to the customer port. The unit will listen and capture the information. So you decide if it has been captured or not. If it's captured already, the unit will progress forward automatically. If it's still listening and waiting for a long time, then you need to do something. You need to uh, uh, tick it as a no serial number or an empty or just skip it. So O means that information has been captured. And when you click on O, that means that it will show you the SSN and PON ID. Uh, N means no serial number, and X means that it has been skipped. L is empty, like we have seen before in the um, splitter distribution. Sorry, the, the splitter analysis. So once you capture the information on A1 and the unit uh, goes to A2, now you are good to go to reconnect your customer on A1, which got disrupted for a few seconds. And now you disconnect the customer on A2 on the panel. So you can go in with your own T patch cord connected to the FX120. And that's the process you need to repeat across the whole frame. Once you're finished, you get again a complete list of what has been captured on the frame. So you get to know what information on which port, and then compare it to your database. So that's all. Thanks for watching and feel free to reach out via our emails or via our website.